So hi everyone and apologies for our delay. Um, my name is Fiona Kelly, LYT Marketing Manager and we're here for tonight's Tuesday Night Live session and we're featuring the Department of Business Studies. Tonight we're going to be joined by Patricia Doherty, Head of Department of Business Studies. Later in tonight's session we're going to be joined by Lecturer in Accounting, Paul O'Sullivan and then we're going to be joined by Graduate in Accounting, John Dorn. So let's get straight into it. We have a lot to cover this evening and we're going to be joined now by Patricia Doherty, Head of Department of Business Studies. So hi Patricia. Good evening Fiona, how are you? Good, good. The joys of technical difficulties. The joys of, uh, and I'm <laughs> sitting here with bated breath that nothing else happens my connection, but we, we, we'll work around it. So great to be here to talk about the programs of business studies. Exactly. So bear with us, folks, just in case there is any connection issues, but we'll keep going through as much content as we can cover tonight. So, Patricia, you have four CAO programs within the Department of Business Studies. Tonight, we're going to touch base on them. We're going to talk about the business degree level eight. We're going to talk about the level seven in business. And we're also going to talk about the new level eight in marketing with online technologies. And then we're going to be joined by Paul, who's going to spotlight the accountancy degree. And John, then graduates, going to join us. So let's get straight into it. Let's talk about the three-year Level 8 Honours Degree in Business. So can you tell me a bit about this programme and, and modules that students might cover? Yep. Yeah. So the three-year Honours Business Degree, Fiona, is one of our most popular degrees. Um, fantastic to be able to get an Honours Degree in Business in three years. Uh, and students can expect to cover all the core uh, subjects in business, such as marketing, accounting, law, economics, management. But they'll also then progress and cover things like HRM, organizational behavior, global marketing, operations management, which is hugely relevant at the moment with supply chain management. They'll look at innovation, user experience and digital business. And, and I suppose the, the, the biggest thing about this program um, is that we hope that from September, students will have the option to go out um, on a work placement for a full year. So wow. we have listened to our students and um, the fact that it's optional is very attractive because you, you may decide not to and continue and finish your degree in three years, or you might take the option to step out for a year, uh, which would be your year three, and, and apply some of that learning from, from the lecture theatre in the classroom into the workplace and then come back and finish off your degree. So That's exciting opportunity. Yeah. And that's similar to the marketing program, really, and that yeah. it has that optional one year placement. So students can choose to go straight through, do the three years level eight, or they can do it like as a three plus one year work placement option in the third year. That's, that's exactly it. So what we are going to be looking at is for our three level eight degrees, students can complete them in three years or they can choose to take an optional full, full year on work placement uh, and their degree would take four years. So they would um, graduate, for example, from accounting with a level eight honours degree in accounting practice if they choose to do that extra year uh, on work placement. That's amazing. Like we've seen before, we had Dr. Kim McFadden on here a few weeks ago talking about life and physical sciences and in dental nursing alone out of 16 students on work placements, 15 were kept within the employer. So that connection yeah. with industry is a big draw. It's a huge draw and to be honest, we get so many inquiries from businesses, both locally and nationally, looking for our students to come on work placement or internships. Um, and we can't meet that demand uh, at the moment, but we will be able to going forward. Yeah, yeah so good for industry and good for the students. So it's kind of win-win and -win, um, mutually yeah. beneficial. Yeah, and I suppose the other thing about the program is that um, the subjects that we cover on the degree meet the teaching council requirements for teaching business at second level as well. So you're kind of covering all all um, possible avenues for students. And, and in fact, I just had a look earlier today and um, the number of graduate roles that are that are available at the moment um, in Ireland for students who want to progress straight from their degree into a, a graduate trainee role uh, and, and an awful lot of opportunities around supply chain management operations at the moment. And these are kind of core subjects in this degree. Yeah, that's fantastic. I actually had the the opportunity to visit the Loretto um, Secondary School in Letterkenny and deliver LYAT stock and met one of our business graduates who's now teaching up there, Emma McDivitt. Um, so it just shows you, I suppose, those opportunities. Um, graduate progression, graduate career opportunities, um, Patricia. So we, I suppose it's, it, it's the... Um, Conundrum, people always ask, what can I do if I do a business degree? Uh, and I suppose the way we frame it is, well, what can you not do? Because 
you know, there's so many of the employers in Ireland, and particularly in the Northwest, are uh, SMEs uh, that they wouldn't be able to afford to hire people for their marketing, their you know payroll, um, some finance tasks. So they really like to get students that have come from a general business degree because they have you know a wide range of skills and competencies. So we would have a lot of students that would go into small businesses, um, but we would have people then that you know would go into maybe HR roles, business development. Some will go into retail. Quite a few, given where we're located, going into the kind of fintech financial services space, mm-hmm. um, some consulting roles, hu- a huge range of roles, really. Yeah, so that's a broad range. And again, I suppose one thing to highlight and what's very unique about your department is you do have options at level six, seven, so your level seven and also level eight. So this would be your level eight option in business, LY118. And as Patricia mentioned there, a broad range of career opportunities from your teaching right the way across all spectrums of the business industry. Mm-hmm. And again, that placement coming on. So just watch this space, really, if you're looking at that business degree for anybody watching. Yeah. Moving in, I suppose, then to the level seven option the three-year bachelor degree that has the plus one year top up this program's a common entry degree very popular in the cao again lets you dip your toe isn't that right in the water of marketing management and accounting Mm -hmm. so i think the, the great thing about the level seven bachelor of business common entry is that students don't have to make a choice in their leaving cert year about what area they want to specialize in so many students will know you know, I think I'd like to do a business course, but I'm not sure which one I should commit to. So if they do the level seven, for the first two years, they'll get to try all the different business subjects and management, marketing, accounting, law, economics. And then at the end of year two, they choose uh, which area they'd like to specialize in. So students will typically choose uh, a stream that they really enjoy, but also that they're good at and that they find that they have an aptitude for that they may not have realized when they were still in school. So you can choose to progress then onto the accounting level seven, where you will focus on, you know, financial accounting, management accounting, business tax, company law. You might decide to do management, where you'll do services and operations management, HRM, entrepreneurship and innovation, some digital media, or you might choose our new revised uh, stream, which is marketing with a technology focus. So it's marketing with online technologies where you'll do things like digital media, web performance, social media marketing, digital marketing. Um, So it really depends on the individual, what they find that they're good at um, and what they like. Um, They can choose the stream. Yeah, and it's become very popular in the CAO common entry degrees because like as you mentioned, lots of students know maybe broadly it's business, but I'm not quite sure what area yet would really suit me. And it does allow you to come in and kind of try multiple areas and then specialise in in third year. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose career prospects. Well, for this, it really depends on which stream you choose. So most of our students, if they choose you know, the management stream, they will progress on and do that one year top up to get their honours level eight. And that's the same for the marketing and the accounting. Now, they can absolutely leave with their ordinary degree uh, and step into roles. Um, it just depends on which stream they've chosen, which type of role they'll, they'll, they'll go for. Mm-hmm. But many will stay on then for that one year add on. Yeah, it's very popular. I suppose the majority of people would progress as that three plus one option, really, yeah. Patricia. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned earlier, but... Step- yeah, sorry, okay. like they could step out temporarily for a year or two and then yeah. come back and uh, pop yeah. it off. So that's an option yeah. as well. So it's an option to come back again and go out into industry mm-hmm. and come back. The degree when you do a three plus one, does it have teaching qual- um, teaching council recognition if you do it as a four year? It depends on which stream you do, Fiona. So okay. we have to look at the individual stream. So it just depends on which option you choose. OK, so depending um, on which option, yeah, but I yeah, suppose knowing yeah. that and being able to tap into that is something as well for people to consider, yeah. um, depending Absolutely. on which option. So because it's multi stream, there's multiple career opportunities. So obvious, if you pick accounting, you'll go down the accounting and finance route, mm-hmm. management, broad spectrum, HR, management, managerial well, roles, all broad spectrum, you know, some administration roles, maybe HR assistants or execs, uh, many will go into kind of business development roles, mm-hmm. some procurement. Um, I, I, I suppose the world's a roster. And given that we have so many startup companies on campus that are always looking for people with these range of skills, you know, um, uh, that there's no limit, I suppose, to what they might do or where they may go. 
Yeah, and as you mentioned, the CoLab Innovation Centre just recently, I think as of yesterday, a further 50 new jobs announced for the CoLab mm -hmm. Innovation Centre. So yeah. very much targeting mm -hmm. the graduates in business um, yeah. and accounting and marketing. Um, moving now across to the new programme, the most recent addition to the department, it is mm -hmm. the Honours Degree in Marketing with Online Technologies. You touched on this earlier, the business degree is looking at that kind of optional one-year placement. This, this programme really started that um, and it's, it's a three -part. It's a it's a three year degree, but if you wish to go out for a year placement, it will take four years. So if you take the three year option, you'll get a degree in marketing with online technologies. If you choose to do an optional work placement, you'll get a degree um, in marketing practice with online technologies. Now it's the same code on the CAO, so you just use the one code LY128, um, and then you choose uh, when you're in year two if you're going to take the work placement or not. So it's. I suppose it's kind of hot off the press. Um, when we designed it, we never realized how much we would all be embracing these new technologies. Um, so uh, it's really of its time and students will cover a whole spectrum of marketing subjects. But in addition, they will be doing things like social media, digital marketing, web performance, brand engagement, consumer insight. And um, I think the really attractive thing about the program is that a lot of their uh, assignments are applied so they will be doing real live projects with industry um, which is very attractive to employers then and it gives the student a lot a lot of areas to discuss in an interview because they will have done real live marketing projects yeah. should they not take the work placement option so i suppose really with this program it's very simple we're trying to create graduates that have this digital first mindset because we know that's what industry is looking for um, and there are hundreds and hundreds of jobs today in Ireland for someone with this type of degree. Yeah, and that's the thing I suppose is about that um, opportunity that awaits. And last year when this program was launched, we met some of the amazing marketing grads from Letterkenny mm -hmm. IT, like mm -hmm. Emma Diver, yeah. marketing and e-commerce manager for Be Perfect Cosmetics. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that we have many more graduates like that who've gone on to amazing careers having studied marketing mm -hmm. at LYIT. Yeah. It's really impressive, yeah, and it's it opens up so many avenues. So we have another graduate who works with Junk Tour, traveling the world. Yes, um, Megan Kelly. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous, yeah. Yeah, so Megan's um, Director of Global Operations for Junk Couture and will be yeah. actually working with us um, over the coming months as we become ATU because they're going to recycle our prospectuses and marketing collateral in a much more fun and unique way. And again, Fantastic. that link that link with Megan has allowed that to happen, a grad right, yeah, of LYIT. It's really great. I'm delighted. I didn't know that. I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah, so it's just hot off the press. Um, so it is. So graduates with digital marketing skills, well, marketing skills are in high demand, as you as you mentioned. So high in demand, terms of the yeah. placements as well, could, like what kind yeah. of companies would people expect to get placements with in terms of opportunities? So um, there's no restriction. People, If people have a part-time job where they're working with a small company and they are already looking at some marketing, we can expand that and, and have that work with us for the work placement year. We will have students that will go into large global companies. We will have people, I would certainly say, will be going to companies in our uh, incubation center, the CoLab. Um, so ultimately, students will come to us with ideas and suggestions for where they'd like to do placement. And it's great to help. We, we will do a lot of work with students in preparing them on how to approach companies for looking for placement. Um, but of course, we'll help people then uh, if someone just can't find a placement, we will have no shortage of companies looking to take the students. Yeah. But again, that real world experience is, is significant in terms of the degree program. Yeah, and <laughs> I, well, uh, if you're offering, it was in my mind, Patricia, you must have read it. <laughs> um, we would absolutely love that in the marketing department. Um, and yeah. I suppose in terms of anybody watching tonight, they were wondering what the CEO yeah. code for this program. It's I mentioned again, LY128. Yeah. yeah, so CAO code LY128, that's the three-year level eight with the plus mm -hmm. one-year optional work placement on this. Mm -hmm. So I am now going to give you a break and um, we are going to introduce Paul O'Sullivan, our lecturer in accounting. So Paul, you are going to join us tonight for the first time. Uh, I may add. Yes. Uh, yes, you're live and online with us tonight on Facebook and YouTube. And you're going to talk to us about the accountancy degree at LYIT, the three year level eight honours degree. So, this program is a, a really, as 
popular program. It has significant unique aspects to it. So let's talk about the honours degree. So what would people expect to study in this program? Uh, very good. Good evening, Fiona, and thanks for inviting me on. Delighted to be here. Um, so students in this program would cover sort of five core thematic areas, uh, namely financial accounting, stroke financial reporting, uh, covering double entry, producing income statements and statements of financial position. Secondly, management accounting and advanced management accounting, which would cover um, areas such as decision variance analysis, cost volume profit, uh, business finance, covering uh, corporate finance, sources of finance, working capital management within an organization. Fourthly, taxation, covering the main taxes, capital gains tax, VAT and business tax. And finally, auditing. I suppose more broadly, they would also cover uh, generic business subjects uh, such as strategic management, digital business, and law for business. Uh, but the heavy emphasis, because uh, it's uh, if they take the three-year option, is on the core accounting areas. Yeah, and it's a three-year level eight. Again, one of those fast-track honours degrees. Um, the level seven option would be the business common entry that we spoke about with Patricia, and you pick the accounting stream. But what's unique about this level eight program? I think the major selling point and what any prospective accounting student asks themselves is, uh, what exemptions will this deliver for me in terms of doing the professional exams? So anyone doing this program should have a, a longer term view to becoming a professional accountant. And the good news for our program at Letterkenny is that we have uh, the maximum exemptions in the country. So no other university or IOT has more exemptions than us. Some of wow. them have the same number of exemptions. Um, so. Uh, for example, if you decided to do certified accounting uh, after finishing your three-year degree, uh, you just have the finals of the, of the of the certified accounting to do. So we've yeah. had students in the past; they've done completed their third-year subjects in May, they've graduated in October, and they've done their final exams in ACCA in December. So they're they're, they're uh, fully academically qualified or exam qualified within uh, six months of doing their final exams. Also for chartered, we have the maximum exemptions av available um, for, for, for their cap one. And also for um, certified public accountant, you go straight through to the finals. So the major you know, um, question um, all prospective accounting students should be asking themselves is what exemptions can this course deliver uh, for me? And happily with our L LY108, I think it, it is, um, it delivers um, optimal exemptions in that regard. The other thing I, I would point out is that um there's no prerequisites to doing the course so you don't yeah. have to have studied accounting school you don't have to have done business organization myself for example when i was doing my leaving cert i did three sciences physics chemistry and biology never did accounting never did wow. commerce never did business organization so uh, the course start, starts from scratch and as, as an old lecturer of mine said to me um you come in with no bad habits uh, you you start from the ground up um so that's something to bear in mind yeah um, that's great to highlight that actually paul and that's the same for the business degree so it's great that you highlighted that um because you don't need to have that basis at leave insert in order to come in and sometimes it is something that people assume or think that you need to have and i suppose it's the same with nursing where you don't come in as a qualified nurse you, you take you to that point so it's the same with accounting you start from the um from the ground up really and i, I suppose it'd be important to highlight too we do have an ma in accounting as well so for somebody who maybe wants to do the three-year level eight there is then the one year ma in accounting so effectively within four years if you're a driven um student you could have your master's and your honors degree within four years absolutely our ma in accounting has run for the last almost 20 years and successful graduates of that get exempted straight through to the finals of of, of chartered accounting chartered accountants ireland which um you know there's only four or five colleges stroke universities in the country with with, with that uh, level of exemption uh, the other selling point i would make about about letter kenny uh, um is that the class sizes are are oh, I... small enough to be informal very approachable and we're speaking to her hopefully he'll, he'll endorse that um, um we are approachable and uh 
uh, students get involved in classes. That's not the case in some of the bigger universities yeah. where you might have 150 or 200 people in there and uh, the lecturer lectures and, and, and the students lift, listen. In, in our situation, you might have up to 30 students. Um, they tend to be interactive, I think, which helps mm -hmm. the student as well. Yeah, absolutely. And being able to connect it. It's funny, we had Thomas Dowling on a couple of weeks ago. Um, Paul and Thomas Dowling mentioned one university where the lecturer entered a different door to the students. So no different doors at Letterkenny IT. We're all coming in the one mm -hmm. way. Um, so in terms Absolutely. of that connectivity, that matters. We had a wee bit of a connection issue there, Paul, um, during that. But just as we kind of wrap up before we bring John um, on, I just want to suppose highlight graduate careers can you just give a kind of a broad um i suppose outline now about i suppose career prospects from the accountancy degree so the majority of our orgs would tend to join accounting practices mm -hmm. um and they could be small medium or large if they stayed around donegal they would tend to be smaller practices but going to the larger cities, then you'd have medium sized uh, and, and obviously the big four, the, 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 the globally largest practice practices we have. So our graduates would be dispersed across across uh, those sort of areas. Um, in fact, recently, one of our one of our uh, um, a number of years ago was appointed uh, a director in Delight, one of the big four companies, and she was wow. the youngest director, youngest director Delight ever appointed in Ireland. Uh, but also, we had a graduate last year who joined Delata, um, the hospitality, the hotel group, um, and they're putting um, her through chartered accounting in an industry hospitality stroke setting. We have graduates who work in banks, um, and many of our graduates would be at financial control level, CIA uh, officer in, in manufacturing. I suppose one thing I would say to the people listening this evening, it's important to remember a very interesting st uh, statistic. In the Irish Stock Exchange, there are you know approximately 50 companies and 35% of the CEOs of those companies came from an accounting background, all qualified accountants. Um, the water in, in the, the, the big uh, FTSE 100 companies, the largest 100 companies in the UK on the stock exchange, 60% of the chairpersons stroke CEOs have accounting backgrounds. So it, it opens up endless possibilities yeah. uh, further down your career. Um, and and, and th th that's something to bear in mind. A uh, final point I would make about, about the lecturers in, in accounting in, in Letterkenny IT, um, soon to be ATU, is that they're all accountants. They're all mm -hmm. professionally qualified accountants uh, from chartered, from certified, um, from SEMA like myself. It's all been down that road. They all have practice stroke industry experience. So it helps them, I suppose, relate a little bit better to the students uh, and the journey yeah. ahead of them. Yeah, exactly. And coming from that applied knowledge, having put it into practice themselves. Now, speaking of graduates, we're going to leave you now, Paul. And thanks so much for joining us. We're going to be joined now by John Dorn. John, you're so welcome um, to tonight's session. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Uh, it's great to have you. Um, so in terms yeah. of uh, yourself, John, it would be great just to set the scene. You graduated from Letterkenny IT in accountancy. Um, yeah. So can you talk to us a bit about your journey? Yeah, so I'm basically just going to endorse what uh, Paul said because he kind of stole my answer uh, when I was going to say <laughs> the interaction. Most thing I most enjoyed about LIT is actually the interaction we had with the lectures. So, um, because of the smaller class size we had, I think we might have had 12 in our class. Um, we were able to any question it was there was no like kind of it was just easy to ask the lectures and it was a straightaway answer like so if you had any problems with assignments or any problems coming up to exam time it was just it was sorted there and then and that's the most thing I most enjoyed about being at LYT whereas I don't think you might have got that at the bigger colleges maybe in Dublin or other bigger cities yeah and i suppose that stands out you know um and and john we've we've 10 weeks now of running our live sessions yeah. on uh tuesday or thursday and um i suppose a lot of the students that have been and graduates who've come on have said that that sense of community being able to yeah. access your academic lecturers and be able to touch base and find out maybe where you're going wrong and that support that does stand out in terms of i suppose yourself what are you currently doing and, and what has yeah. been your journey post-graduation so my journey post-graduation, I went straight into uh, a, a small firm in uh, Letterkenny called Stuart McLaughlin. So 
-hmm. I left, well, I joined there after I completed the master's degree. So I actually did my work placement there for the master. So I got a job straight out of that. Um, after I spent a year there, uh, then I moved on to uh, Primerica, so the local multinational. I spent three years there. I worked in um, two different, uh, two different um, departments, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, so I was working in real estate accounting and I also worked in investor services. And now I'm going a wee bit left field. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do, an, I'm trying to get into the golf industry. So I met a fella called Michael Keefe. He's a director in um, Ohio State University and he brings people on these internships basically in America. And I was just talking to him and he's, I was mentioning I was in the accounting industry and all this here stuff and I'd like to get into the, the golf industry and he was saying this would give you a big competitive advantage, like because you understand what business, how businesses work. So that's where I'm yeah. going. Now. I'm going off to America on the 9th of May. So, wow. That's where I am now. And what, yeah. uh, so, in terms of yourself, again, this goes back to what Paul was saying about that yeah. the, the opportunities that um, the yeah. accountancy degree opens. So, you have moved from SME to multinational yeah. to international travel, and again, yeah. all from the back of an accountancy degree. So, that's, yeah, that's exactly, pretty yeah. unique. Yes. Yeah, it's special, I think. In a way, like it's yeah. Not every not not every um, not every course offers you that kind of no. opportunities. I don't think. No, not at all. Now, in terms of um, your accountancy degree, how has it prepared you then for your career so far to date? Yeah, as Paul mentioned, like I'm still currently um, I haven't quite completed my exams yet. Not as quick as the December after, but I'm still currently <laughs> completing my uh, ACC exams. So I got straight through to my finals. So I have wow. two more to do. So I still have my audit and my tax to do. So I'm hoping to complete them as soon as I come back from America. So that's the main way it's helped me. And well, that's, what, that's what I would say. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's building blocks really for you in terms yeah, it's of building blocks, developing, yeah. So it's, yeah, developing your own career. Yeah. And as Patricia mentioned earlier, being able to come back to these things as well and take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is a big deal too. Um, if you were to go back again and to make choices again and you're a CEO and if you're watching this, yeah. maybe if you are watching this at 17, 18 or a parent or um, a guidance yeah. counselor watching it, would you choose the program in accountancy again? Uh, yes, definitely, and definitely hearing about the option of the the work placement yes. um, before you finish, it would definitely in, like uh, intrigue me because getting into the work placement is very like so vital because like, you're building uh, a network as well and somewhere Absolutely. that you might be able to work for after you complete the course. Yeah, well, thanks so much, John, for joining us. We're going no to take problem. you back at the very, very end. We're going to be joined again by Patricia. Um, um, I'm going to kind of wrap up with Patricia and then bring back the full panel. So, Patricia, um, part-time postgraduate offerings in the department. We're going to kind of just briefly touch on what's available. Um, it would be remiss not to mention our part-time lifelong learning business degree. Um, mm -hmm. Can we talk a bit about that program yeah. um, here this evening? Great. Thanks, Fiona. Um, uh, so we have a part-time business degree. So we've talked a lot about the, the three-year honours degree in business that we have full-time, but we also have a very similar program that runs part-time in the evening uh, for those that maybe just didn't have the opportunity to progress to third level when they left school. Um, so it's a great option for people to come and have the opportunity to study to degree level um, in the evenings. So a uh, really popular program and, you know, so many success stories have come out of the program. I think the great thing about it is that um, it's now one night on campus and one night online. So yes. the, the ask is really one night a week during term time over three years and then another few months where people will be finishing off doing a research project. Um, so it's a really applied course. So if people are working, which many of them will be working full time and doing this in the evenings, a lot of the assessment, a lot of the work is, is applied and based back on their workplace. Um, so a program we're very proud of and I, I think a very important offering to give yeah. people the opportunity to go back to education. Absolutely. Um, people that are at work. And in terms of applying for this program, it's a direct entry application to the department it's by a, admissions. A, you just apply through admissions. Um, you'll find the application form on our website. But there are also probably people out there maybe watching who 10 years ago did a, um, a national certificate in business or mm -hmm. a HND in the north. 
those people can apply for advanced entry. Mm -hmm. So they can apply and be considered for advanced entry into year two or sometimes even into year three. So if you've previous qualifications um, in business and you've done other bits and pieces through your work, for example, um, get your application and provide all the documentation and then we will look to see if we could actually offer you advanced entry. Yeah, that's fantastic. So anybody looking for more information, do go to our website or you can email us and we'll give details at the very end. Um, in relation to master's programs, we'll just touch on this yep. briefly. Patricia, master's yep. programs available within the department, could you highlight them? Yeah, so you've already heard about our master's in accounting and you have a, a graduate and a lecturer from the program with us. Um, so the ma we're actually revising all of our programs at the minute. So the, the one big change with the Masters in Accounting will be that there will be data analytics in it from next year mm -hmm. as well. So um, and the Masters is a really strong reputation um, actually nationally. Mm -hmm. We also have a Masters in Marketing Practice mm -hmm. and that will be running from September. And again, it's been revised to cover things like data analytics, uh, omni-channel marketing, communications, innovation, advanced digital marketing. Uh, we also have a brand new master's that uh, will be delivered 100% online. So from engagement with our current students and, and given their experiences, many of them like the idea of studying their master's online uh, where they, they might be able to work and juggle yes. master's study because it's remote. Um, so that's a master's in strategy, enterprise and innovation. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a higher diploma in fintech, so it's more a conversion into the fintech sector. So if people mm -hmm. have um, a level eight degree, um, they can apply for this. Your degree could be in engineering, computing, business, uh, and it's like a stepping stone into the fintech industry. Yeah. Now, in addition to that, we do have three other masters that would be described, I suppose, as post experience. So they're not really for people coming straight off their degree. They're for people that might be in the workplace for a number of years. And that's a master's in innovation and fintech, an MBS in innovation and leadership, and a similar one for the public sector. Yeah, so executive programs um, in that context. So again, anybody looking for more information on our postgraduate or part-time programs can go to the website lyat.ie, click on part-time and postgrad to find out more. Um, so I suppose wrapping up, Patricia, what makes the Department of Business Studies stand out for someone who is thinking about choices now as they progress towards September? Yeah, I think uh, John and Paul have, have already covered it well. It really is the lecturer-student relationship, Fiona. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very strong and it's very apparent. And it's one thing that students always, always comment on to us um, uh, when we meet them and, and often many years after they've graduated. And then the other thing is we very much consider, consider ourselves to be very much an applied department, that our programmes are very much applied and linked to industry requirements. So I think that's what mm -hmm. probably makes us stand out a little bit. Yeah, I would agree in terms of that. And again, that the industry connections going throughout um, the programs as well and exemptions, professional body, as Paul mentioned. We're going to bring everybody back. We're going to bring back Paul, John and Patricia. We have a few questions um, and I suppose and maybe some have been answered, but we'll just put them out there again just to reiterate. Um, uh, Paul, I might put this one to you. Is there a work placement in the accountancy degree? Yes, we are introducing a four-year option, uh, which includes one year on work placement. So you have a choice of doing the straight uh, three-year vanilla option um, for your level eight, or you can do a four-year option, which includes a uh, one-year work placement. And as you said yourself, um, getting your foot in the door with, um, with, with any industry or practice um, is a very good way of, of showcasing your wares. Um, we conducted a lot of research among our graduates and the employers and uh, the feedback was very strongly that um, uh, practical work experience would, would benefit the students. So we've taken that on board and yeah. that is starting um, uh, next year, I think, Patricia. Yeah, so the, the, the students that join us in first year uh, this September would be the first that will be able to evade of the, the placement when they get to third year. Okay, so anybody that's looking at us tonight and watching and thinking about applying for September, know that you'll be entering a program with that option um, from September. Um, John, a question for you. How soon before you graduated did you have a job offer? Um, I basically had a job offer 
Didn't Before? Know graduate. <laughs> Before I even graduate, yeah. So I got, I basically got offered a job straight after my work experience from the masters in accounting. Yeah. So it's basically like, I kind of trade like an eight week interview. So yeah, you try work and perform as best as possible. It's the opportunity you get from doing the program. Yeah, and I think that's amazing. Again, significant, and we're hearing that more and more as we go through these sessions, the live sessions, for where there are work placements, there are jobs, you know, um, yes. and that seems to, t to tend to come through. Um, Patricia, should I put the level seven of business degree down as well as market and level eight degree in my choices? This is a question. Absolutely, and feel that I'm sure you always advise people yeah. to use both. <laughs> both lists so use your level seven and your level eight list just to keep yourself covered yeah so to make sure you have as many chances because points can go up and come down so we do know that in terms of supply um patricia i'm putting this one to you what placement opportunities are in the market and degree so th it's flexible you mentioned yeah it's very flexible what we would do is so if you as i said if you were maybe working in a part-time job maybe you have a family business uh, or there's a company you'd always like to have you know gotten to know more what the um academic supervisor so you would have an academic supervisor who manage your placement and what they will do is meet with the potential placement company just to check that you know th that it's a role that will get you to use all your marketing experience to date and that you won't be um filing or something so we would just check out every potential placement to make sure that you'll get the full benefit of being out for a year on work placement in a, in a marketing environment so a huge yeah, and that's range important. Of that's important yeah. to highlight too. It's not that you would be in just covering roles; that you're actually in the industry that you've chosen and doing yeah, things relevant yeah. to it. Um, Paul, final question to you: What exemptions are available in the accountancy degree? Again, please, can you tell? The sure. Um, so, for uh, uh, certified accounting, you're exempted straight through to the finals. For uh -huh. certified public accounting, you're exempted straight through to the finals. And for chartered accounting, you're exempted uh, straight through to CAP 2, which is the maximum exemption chartered accountants Ireland will give for an undergraduate degree. So for chartered accountants, you have two sets of exams to do once you finish. If you choose to stay on and do the master's with us, you'll be exempted straight through to the finals of chartered accountants Ireland. Wow. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, that's us, folks. Thanks so much, Patricia, Paul, and John, for joining us. John, we wish you all the best in the States, and you'll be able to pop back on again with us in the future and tell us how that all went, or possibly come to us from the States um, for our next session, if that's um, doable for you, because we now live in the virtual world, um, so it's possible. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back in the month of May for our Change the Mind sessions, and we're going to be joined by the team in admissions, student services, um, by our our head of sport, Michael Murphy, in relation to sports scholarships. Um, but for now, we will take a break um, as we become Atlantic Technological University, Donegal campuses. Um, and thanks so much again for joining us um, on our live sessions.